Are these usually recorded, Martha? Yes. So we um, are live on YouTube right now and um, just gonna move our committee members over to be panelists. And as they come on, we'll be able to kick the meeting off. Good morning, all. Charlie Waddell signing in late. I apologize. Hi, Charlie. You're you're great. No problem. Thank you. Commute was terrible. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I feel like I'm running later when it's on virtual than in person. Well, I'm still recovering from uh, a vacation, so it'll be a while. Well, welcome home. It's great to be home, and I missed y'all. Oh. Tim, we have three of the five committee members online. Um, I haven't, I don't think we've heard from Mr. Spoonhauer or Mr. Thornton as to their plans for today, but um, we do have a quorum for the committee and uh, can start whenever you're ready. And we're on live, live on YouTube now. Great, Martha, thank you for that. I think we probably should get started. Uh, Jacob, good to see you. Charlie, good to see you and everybody. Um, Rashandra, Sid and Kelly and your team. It's good to see everybody this morning. I think, Martha, we really just really do have one thing on our agenda, but do I need to do anything, Sid, about making our virtual meeting somewhat official or? Yeah, I'll just note for everyone's um, information, um, today's meeting is authorized to be held virtually in um, accordance with the mayor's current state of emergency with regard to the COVID-19 virus. So that is the reason that we are able to hold this meeting in, in total uh, virtual uh, format today. Um, I, I do not know that there is a specific expiration date for that state of emergency, but I would say that given the news this weekend and this week of uh, maybe the good news that's coming for our community that that maybe will be ending soon. But um, currently today, we are still operating under that state of emergency, which enabled this meeting to happen virtually. Good, Martha. Thanks for covering me with that. Sure. We don't have anything else really on our agenda other than for you to introduce our presentation, right? That's right. Yeah. So um, I'm just very excited uh, to be able to reintroduce the team from the Brand Federation. They've been working now for, gosh, about six months, I think, uh, with us in designing the format of this brand strategy effort and then conducting, as you all know, the, the research and the discovery to be able to culminate in today's presentation. So um, we're all really excited for the findings, I think, that you all are going to be recommending today and just look forward to, I think, two things really. One, um, this is an advanced screening, if you will, of the recommendations that will be provided to the full commission on March 10th. So, um, you know, one of the benefits of having a committee review this is to be able to get your feedback. And I know, Tim, you're going to have some additional maybe instructions around that. But um, this is the first kind of public debut of this presentation, and um, the intention is to be able to have this come forward from the committee to the full commission with your, your recommendations for, for adoption, as it were. So, Correct. Yeah, thank you. And so, Jacob and Charlie, so, you know, from, from my perspective, obviously, we'll make our, our Brand Federation will make a similar type of presentation. Obviously, the board may or may not have questions, but my hope is our role there is the one is is really the group that is both a cheerleader for what this committee recommends and to some degree the subject matter experts that sort of take the mantle from our consultants and answer the questions. To me, that's a great um, a great look when the committee is engaged enough to be able to answer your colleagues' questions. And then therefore, I believe they're going to have the confidence to go ahead and, and vote, for, you know, vote affirmatively, which is what you know, I'm anticipating we're going to get. So listen, uh, stay in tune, get your questions answered today, because I'm going to be calling you, on you guys on the 10th to sort of help us endorse this to the full commission. OK. Thank you.
Well, I think without further ado, um, Kelly, do we turn it over to you first and then you'll do or how yeah, absolutely. we can talk about it here. So <laughs> I'll get us started and I'll invite Rachel to share screens because we have some things that we'll be going through. Um, we call this the brand book. It's the output of all of the work that we've been doing to dive in to do research into Plan RVA's mission, its scope, its activities, the things that make it unique. And uh, I'll talk a little bit in just a moment about the process that we went through. But before we do, I just want to talk about uh, some level setting when we talk about brand, because we had some questions along the way. Well, are you going to turn this into a consumer brand? Certainly we, we could, but that's not our goal. Um, brands are not really about just creating a slogan or a jingle or a clever message. It's something that only works in the consumer realm. Branding is a uh, deeper science than that. It's really about helping to unearth the truth of what makes an organization powerful and unique and strong and necessary, and to help succinctly to capture that truth so that we get a clarity of message and a clarity of purpose. And I think those two things are the most important deliverables, right? We want a clarity of message so that everybody who interacts with Plan RVA has an understanding of what makes Plan RVA important to this community and this series of communities, this region. And that tends to really drive clarity of purpose. Uh, to remind us all who are stewards for this organization of what is most important about our work and therefore keep us on track. And so you can think of that clarity of message as driving the reputation of an organization. The clarity of purpose is driving the activation of that organization and both of them are outcomes and brand. So our goal is not to create a consumer brand out of Plan RVA, but to create real clarity in terms of what makes Plan RVA powerful, important, and we get, get that clarity by digging in and learning. And so if we go to the next slide, our process was really starting with discovery and immersion and taking a deep dive. We conducted internal interviews within the organization, uh, kickoff meeting, review a ton of background information, not just about this organization, but about its history, about other uh, peer in organizations within this region and about peer organizations around the country. We then dove into stakeholder engagement um, and learned from our stakeholders and then ultimately crafted the brand strategy and platform you'll be seeing today. Now there's still work to be done. That's why this phase three is highlighted. Um, once we get consensus from the organization, then there's work to be done on transition planning and action planning to bring this brand to life. But where we are today is to deliver the brand strategy and platform. And I'm gonna turn it over to Fraser and Ryan, my colleagues, to share that. Thank you all. It's, um, it's good to see you, good to be with you, good to be at this point um, to, to bring this work forward. Um, I think in this process, we've, we've sort of felt like we have been um, living uh, and sort of walking lockstep with many of your stakeholders. Kelly talked about the research process and sort of the deep dive and immersion into um, the organization, its practices, its processes, and probably most importantly, the folks that interact with it, that care about it, and that are charged with talking about it and bringing its importance and necessity forward to those it serves. Um, and the, I think when we use the word serve, you know, we have to keep in mind that this really, really, um, it, it is all about the regional impact. And one of the things, while everybody is a, um, you know, is a cheerleader and everybody is an ambassador and everybody is, is engaged and committed, not everybody uh, in some cases is, 
is on the same page um, in terms of what they talk about, how they talk about it, how they articulate the benefits of the organization um, in their day-to-day, in their community service. So um, one of the, the interesting things is to go straight back to the charter. And we found ourselves going back to your charter again and again and again. And oddly enough, um, the charter does bring some clarity to sort of this organization that was created, um, as we all know, by state statute. So there is sort of a roadmap in your um, in in the very document that defines who you are and what you do. Go ahead, Rachel. Next slide. So out of these many many conversations. Although overall, you could say there was a lack of clarity, there were some very clear strengths. There were some very clear, um, this is who we are and this is what we do. Um, the first being, of course, uh, a convener. It's, it, it's what you do. It is sort of your stock and trade. You are able to say, we are the only people who can, we are the only organization that convenes nine localities, nine municipalities, um, leaders. Uh, this, by convening these folks, you create not only a, 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 a logistic process, but you, you create the opportunity for empathy and sympathy and understanding between these localities that they probably don't have, even though in other cases, smaller groups may meet from time to time. Um, you sort of foster a get to know each other, a knowledge and an understanding of things that might not, might not happen anywhere else. The other piece, as we all know, is the, the very basic but critical funding conduit. Um, you serve as, as a as a way for localities to focus and, and make important infrastructure, large scale projects happen. Um, this piece really is all about looking forward. Um, you, the, this is where your, your existence is absolutely critical to making things happen, to making big things happen in this region. Your support services, um, these were these came up again and again in conversations. Um, the fact that you have expertise, you have data at your fingertips, you provide um, resources and whether they be, again, data studies, uh, staff expertise, but the support services you bring granted across differing um, sort of uh, size, shape, need in locality, overall, the, the support services that you bring are kind of a drumbeat and an important drumbeat, sort of a theme line through this, this whole piece, whether it's Henrico County or Goochland County or Charles City County, at some level, everybody intersects or these services intersect with a need they have. Um, Clearly, um, transportation. This one, obviously, it rises to the top many, many, many times. In fact, I would venture to say that some folks, when you say, what does Plan RVA do? They say, well, they're, they're all about transportation. So this is where there's an interesting opportunity for sort of a pool of these things, for certain things to rise to the top, but making, assuring that the other services and the other roles that you serve are equally as important. Um, so it just, I want you to take a look at this because this is, this is sort of, these are things that, that your stakeholders and the region recognize as your strengths. And it's important that you recognize them as your strengths too. So head to the next slide. So having talked about clarity, the other side of that is maybe not so clear, kind of either, um, I wouldn't say a misunderstanding, but sort of a lack of clarity, a lack of understanding around some of the other 
things that you do that challenge those strengths um, and sort of erode some of the confidence that people have in saying, these are the things we do. Um, the diversity in the region, we talk, I mentioned it just a minute ago, that's both a strength and a challenge in some cases. The, the, everybody acknowledges that the, the municipalities in the region are very different. They have very different needs. Many of them have some of the same expertise and capabilities and capacities that Plan RBA has. They have them on their own. Um, it, there are those that actually sort of question, you know, because of this diversity and because of the sheer size of this region, you know, is regional collaboration possible? Well, um, you know, clearly, um, it is possible and um, there's, there is a place where it happens and that's, that's where Plan RVA is, again, you'll see this is sort of the center of a circle that has a positive and beneficial ripple effect across the region. Um, many folks, I think, sort of expressed some confusion around those that sit under the umbrella of Plan RVA. Um, there are lots of acronyms that float around under the Plan RVA umbrella. Um, in many cases, it's simply, um, it's a matter of, again, a benefit of going through this exercise of understanding how to articulate the relationships you have with, in some cases, the agencies you've created, the smaller, um, entities that you've created to tackle some of the, of the, the bigger problems. Um, I'm gonna actually go sort of, well, I'm, I'm headed in the, in the right direction here, sort of um, clockwise. The other, I think, drumbeat that we heard again and again and again was sort of the, the desire for Plan RVA to truly own your strength to put yourself in a position of saying, because we have these sort of strengths and we, we, can, we can bring people together, we can find money, we can, um, we, can, we can understand bigger problems, we have the ability to set some priorities. And I think there was some confusion and some hope around how those decisions and setting of priorities is made. Um, so I think it, 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 looking at and sort of earmarking how these decisions and the process for making decisions around priorities get made is something that we heard. The transportation eclipse, we talked about, I talked about that a little bit. Uh, transportation clearly uh, is a traditional role that Plan RVA has played. It's a role that many of your, your um, contemporary, uh, contemporaries in the, in the planning district region share. Um, I think what we heard and what we want to move forward is it's not the only thing you do. It's not the only value that you bring. Um, and while it may be the most obvious, other areas of your other program areas, your emergency management, the environment, the activity, and, and even under those program areas, some other priorities that are sort of creeping in to your agenda are equally as important and worthy of, of sort of talking about a little, a little more loudly in the room. Next slide. So all of this comes down to the fact that you have strengths, you have benefit, you have a tremendous value we're just not talking about it loudly enough. We're not owning it. Um, and the opportunity truly um, is what's happening because 
we're not talking loudly enough is that others are defining that perception. Your stakeholders are saying, this is, this is what I think they are. This is what I think they are. This is what, and at the end of the day, Plan RVA needs to lead the definition of their value. Claim the value Plan RVA provides the region by clarifying who we are, what we do, and how we do it. It's pretty straightforward. Next slide. So as we sort of sorted through a lot of, of what I've just explained, four things began to become apparent. Defining clear pillars that support your role. Um, so one of the things, one of the, the opportunities, and it, it sort of came out of the support services, and it again links back to your charter. Affirming the role of Plan RVA as a seer Leverage our expertise, insights, and data to identify future opportunities and challenges for the region. And again, it, 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 it comes sort of straight out of the, the, the charter to provide a means of coherent articulation of community needs, problems, and potential for service. The word potential, the word forward-looking, future, those are all key, key roles that Plan RVA plays. And it's hard to see it when you are the seer, but the, the organization's ability and potential to define, to not only talk about the work you do, but to talk about the work you do in terms of its value to the region and uniquely yours, to look forward, to say, these are the challenges that are coming down the road that we need to be prepared for. That's a powerful, powerful position. And one plan RVA uh, actually can own quite well. Next slide. Again, um, a couple of stakeholder quotes. It's clearly recognized, I think, among your, um, your ambassadors the folks you serve, um, and they're very specific about it. The um, the the constant the the coalescing of data and analysis of data, a lot of technical capacity that is valuable and could be leveraged more. That there's the tremendous value in that. So the value and benefit of Plan RVA as a seer, I think, is uh, is we 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 put forward as, as sort of a found, one of the founding pillars for, for success. Next slide. Convener, obviously, and clearly um, highly recognized. Convene local governments for discussion and collaboration. That is exactly what you do. It links straight to your charter. Doesn't need a lot of ex explanation or conversation. It, the benefits of that are wide ranging and, and, and immediately apparent. Um, so next slide. Again, clearly recognized um, and mentioned and spoken many times, um, this ability to convene particularly now in a time when it's very hard to get individuals much less governmental bodies together around a table to have a conversation and learn from each other and tackle hard problems is really, really tough. So I don't think this, this, this cannot be underestimated in terms of a strength. Next slide. Question? Okay, I'm gonna keep, keep rolling. Um, Planner, uh, again, this is, it, it links right back to you, to the charter. Um, it's, it's what you do. Um, I, I think sometimes maybe it's harder to articulate this 
in many cases than others. Oddly enough, it's in your name. It's it's when you say, what does Plan RVA do? Well, they plan things. They look forward. They get folks together. And you find solutions. Um, you gather resources. You create plans of action. Um, next slide. The flip side of this is that it assumes, in some cases, deliverables. And while the deliverables are there, um, there is room in this particular role, I think, or we heard, um, to sort of push a little harder, to stand a little straighter in terms of this is what we do point out how we do, how we, we, we offer solutions in terms of setting agendas and talking about how you go about addressing regional priorities and priorities that you set. Next slide. Shaper, this, this intersects with planner, I think, uh, fairly, fairly tightly in that it, these two pillars pull together your the, the, the expertise, the resources, the data, the ability to see forward all together in actively participating in a solution for the region, whether it is something that is alongside you, whether it's something that's, that the organization owns, whether it is something you fund, um, it, whether it is something that comes to you externally, the organization has the ability to participate and impact an outcome that benefits the region or certainly informs the region. And I think when we go to the next slide. If we could, if I could just make one quick point on this one sure. too, sure. Um, that by really leaning in and we, when we look at the language in the charter here, encouraging the creation of effective regional planning agencies and providing the professional and and financial assistance of the Commonwealth, when we are able to really lean into this and start to talk about our role as a shaper, we help to overcome one of those challenges from all that Fraser spoke about all the way in the beginning, which is that clarity around how these different um, regional agencies sit together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, seeing this role of the shaper sort of take form, if you will, and become part of the dialogue helps bring that clarity people are craving to why there are is some sometimes a bit of an alphabet soup, if you will. But the 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 linkage between Plan RVA and all of those other um, sister agencies or, or even uh, agents, agencies or coalitions that have been created by the organization is, is it's a really important piece of the puzzle to understand how all of that works. Yeah, it, exactly, good point. Um, so let's go to the next slide. I want everybody to sort of take a look at this just, just for a minute before I talk through it. Um, it really is, I would say, the it can be a roadmap, it can be a nexus, it it sort of pulls everything together and <laughs> from seer to convener to shaper to planner. If you look in the middle, that little dark blue area is sort of the reason that all of these things matter. And 
I think it it punctuates the role that Plan RBA through your programs can own, can claim, can shout about. Um, and you'll notice that one of the the many while you while there are three program areas, the emergency management environment and transportation at the top, um, clearly we don't exist, time doesn't stand still and the region doesn't stand still and, and priorities and needs and um, agendas change. And that's one of the strengths I think for Plan RBA is that you are in a position to be responsive and to be nimble and We've, after many of the, uh, through our conversations with folks, um, there were occasionally questions like, well, I wonder why and what if we did? And those little pluses that you see in that, in that diagram are sort of where the, the opportunities to intersect and add to your program areas fall. Um, as you all know better than anybody, uh, everything intersects everything else at some point. There is nothing exists in a vacuum. And this diagram, I think sort of gives you a really quick way to sort of say, here are our roles. We are, we see, we convene, we plan, we shape. We have a defined program area, program areas. We have strengths in each program area and we have room for more. We have, we have the flexibility, we have the skill set, we have the expertise, and we have permission to own this. And to say, this is what we do, this is who we are, this is how we do it. And honestly, we, you know, we, we hear an awful lot about folks talking about Plan RBA. Um, hey, hey, Frazier, Frazier, let me just suggest, I mean, Ed, the, the, the um, audience that you have is up to speed on everything we've got to at this point. I mean, I think yep. this is really telling us what we already know about our own organization and this committee is well aware of this. Right. If we're gonna have time for dialogue today, I think we're gonna to have to go to the next uh, step. Headed right that, headed right that way. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Ryan. Yeah, let's, let's bring this all home and talk about how this becomes a toolkit that we use to move forward. So first, we're just going to start by, by a simple, compelling way to say who we are right back to the beginning and our objective, what we do and how we do it. So Plan RVA is where we come together to look ahead. And that's to, to Fraser's point on the last slide. That's really, it's all in service of our shared future and setting up our shared future. What we do is we guide Central Virginia's future, focusing on high impact competencies like emergency management, environment, and transportation. And how we do it, we see, we convene, we plan, and we shape Central Virginia's future. This should all feel very straightforward, uh, clear, and easy to articulate. But when we put that into a little bit more of a purpose statement, something with a little bit more emotion that we can get excited about and, and be ready to speak to moving forward, it sounds something like this. Where we come together to look ahead. Plan RVA has been guiding Central Virginia's future development for decades. By convening dedicated leaders from across the diverse Central Virginia region, we've been identifying future needs, facilitating the development of plans around those needs, and helping to build solutions that make our shared future brighter. Others may be focused on the headline du jour, but we know that to keep our homeland prosperous, we must always look ahead. Backing out, we know that we can boost Plan RBA's clout, get the support we need by sharing the impact of our work through the lens of these roles and competencies. 
And that becomes really important because as Fraser said earlier, we have the deliverables, we have the stories that can come to the forefront to really prove out these different roles to help us uh, own the dialogue about the other organizations that we sit alongside and that we support through shaping to help us really become authorities on the data and, and um, insights and expertise we have in seeing, to help fit our convening into a network of other roles that we play. So we become strong and recognized for not only convening local leaders, but for the output of that task and the planning, the guiding, the drafting of a plan of action and utilizing available and efficient resources that all of that drives our behavior. Um, and when we talk about it, we talk about it through the lens of this shared future where we come together to look ahead. So we're a regional vision for our future. The jurisdictions that Plan RBA serves are incredibly diverse, ranging from bustling cities to beautiful farmland. Each has unique needs and a defined vision. But as unique as we are, we are united by one undeniable truth. Our areas are interconnected. To plan for the future, we must take a regional approach to the challenges and opportunities that affect us all. And the idea that tomorrow's solutions are born here, this looking ahead. Plan RVA is where the region's leaders go to envision and shape the future of Central Virginia. It's a place for politicians to focus not only on the headline du jour, but on the long-term vision that we keep our homeland beautiful and prosperous. And a little bit of fun here. I bet you've never thought of yourselves as Gandalf as you came together. But when we start to think about how we should show up, how should we should talk and how we should behave, we thought Gandalf was just about as perfect as you get. Not only is he um, everyone's favorite wizard, but he is also quite frequently a seer, convener, planner, and shaper of the future. So when we talk like Gandalf, we're visible, but we're not self-promoting, we're not self-aggrandizing. We're encouraging out there, really bringing people together and, 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 and spreading that shared future and the love of it. But we're firm in that. We take a stand when we need to. We're wise, but we're always curious. We're always being that seer and gathering that information. We're inspirational. Yes, but we're not lofty. What we're trying to do here is achieve real goals. We're familiar, you know, we're, the, we're, we're brought to the tables on a regular basis. People know what we do and know the value we bring. We're not stagnant. We're always changing and innovating, thinking of ways to better serve our region. And we're accessible. You know, we're on YouTube right now, <laughs> but we're focused. We're focused around a, a specific goal. So this is the way we, we see the voice showing up and to show how all that comes together in a beautiful story, we have a little manifesto for you. Look around this region. What do you see? A mighty river that carries our story in its current. A vibrant, creative, ever-changing city. Verdant farmland that stretches as far as the eye can see. Small towns where family businesses serve generations of customers. Neighborhoods where friends smile as they pass on the sidewalks. Universities that attract the best and brightest from around the world. Thrumming thoroughfares, carrying people and prosperity to every corner of the Commonwealth. All these images and countless more make up the magical place we call RVA, the area of central Virginia where we raise our families, make our fortunes, and build our lives. Each of us plays a part in making the RVA region all it can be, but sometimes urgent concerns push aside long-term planning and our focus on our own backyard eclipses shared opportunities for advancement. What if there was a place purpose-built to overcome these obstacles? That place is Plan RVA, where the brightest minds in the RVA region convene with one simple, powerful goal, 
to work together to make our home the best it can be. A place where we can envision our shared future for this remarkable corner of the world. The RVA reason is our homeland and its future is insured at Plan RVA. Plan RVA, where we come together to look ahead. And there it is all written out on one page. So I think we're, we're, we're getting to the point now where it's time to hear your, your, your voices. As, as Tim put before, this is a really important piece for you to ask questions, push on the things you've heard. Um, we're excited to, to, to bring you into the fold and, and hand this over so you can be both owners and, and um, distributors of this knowledge and, and information and this brand. I'll be, the, I'll be the early, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Please go ahead, John. Thank you, Tim. I'll be the early Christian here. Um, a couple of facetious comments and then some serious, um, impressive presentation, <clears throat> excuse me, inspiring presentation. Um, I've never been li likened to Gandalf, but I'll take the uh, analogy. You And I also want to point out, uh, uh, using one of your words, the magic, a little bit of Merlin also is is what we're bringing. Uh, I sense um, I've, <clears throat> now. Again, thanks thanks for the inspiration and for defining it. Got a couple of questions. Um, this brand presentation. Who do you anticipate the audience will be? Policymakers, uh, community ser independent community service uh, providers, municipal staff, whom? So um, we, we have some other presentations of this set up, but we don't envision that what we will be doing moving forward as we disseminate this in information is just presenting this um, presentation over and over again. There will be other ways that this information starts to take hold. And the next phases, and Fraser and Kelly can speak to this um, uh, as well, but the next phases will be working on implementing this. And, and that implementation, thank you, Rachel, that implementation, that transaction and action planning will be all about figuring out the best ways to get this information in front of people. And that might be presentations like this with people that we know we're going to need to own and speak to this work moving forward. Um, it might be in, in the form of training or onboarding for certain positions. Um, it might be in the form of press releases or articles written about the work of Plan RVA. And it might be even in the form of some external communications talking about um, all that this organization does. So there will be many different forms this work takes. This is the strategic foundation upon which we will leap from. Yeah, I think that's well said, Ryan. And I, I, I would add, we're not looking at or envisioning that the general public needs to know all about Plan RVA. <clears throat> they will experience Plan RVA through the good works that drive uh, thoughts about the future of this region and help to drive action. Uh, but policy makers, uh, the people engaged and involved with the organization itself, employees, do need more clarity. And our research kind of pointed that out, that different people have different perspectives on even the mission of the organization. And so, so bringing clarity to those who really do interact on a regular basis with Plan RVA is the most important audience. Charlie, what else? It sounds like that was a question, one of a couple that you've got. Thanks, Tim. Uh, yeah. Um, this is kind of leaping forward into the, uh, the future for um, Plan RVA, kind of transcending this presentation, but, um, and this is a question for everyone, what do you see is the next big issue facing Plan RVA, and I've got some ideas, that will um, demonstrate what Plan RVA is and embody um, branding, so to speak, or, or rephrasing the question, with as much um, challenges we have, transportation, energy, um, and um, emergency um, planning, 
and the uh, bill before the the funding bill that passed Congress, what do you see that we can hang our hat on um, to show folks um, the strategy come alive? Hopefully that question made sense. Uh, but but not as a project. I mean, this isn't really project discussion yet, Charlie. I mean, obviously this is a tool that we're gonna take forward, but you're asking for what are the next big actual projects that this organization is gonna work on? Cause I don't, I don't think that's what we've asked Kelly's team to address. To your point, uh, Tim, you're right. I was just thinking that um, the strategy is is understandable and excellent direction. I'm just thinking um, possibly big picture as to uh, something concrete. Um, but maybe I'm overthinking this. It might be helpful to to let you know as well that one of the implementation steps that we'll be working on is an audit. And through that audit, we'll look at things like agenda or um, agendas for meetings or, or some things, website content, et cetera, and start seeing that it aligns with this. Um, that's not necessarily directly informing what product projects move right. forward, but there, there may be pieces of the puzzle that go into process that help those decisions become easier. And that would be a part of that sort of audit um, portion that we'll be working with the leadership of Plan RBA to, to, um, to make sure is aligned with this work. Yeah, you, that, that does add clarity and... Uh, makes it easier for me to present to those that would not have any concept, um, the general public, so to speak. That that helps. Yeah, that's great. Jacob, why, Jacob, why don't you give me your reactions or comments or questions? Make sure we get a chance to to hear from you yeah. as well. No, I appreciate that, Mr. Chair, and and I think um, yeah, Mr. Waddell. Uh, was moving into projects, but something that I think he was alluding to, and correct me if I'm wrong, but is a is a a step before that is um, through the implementation process that you are developing, I'm interested to know and how among the different um, elected and member stakeholders, local governments, how we're building consensus. Because it's one thing to say, okay, here are the different um, sex and different uh, staff versus political versus um, appointed, they'll have different briefings, but how are we gonna know that they'll all come back to the same page and that how are we gonna measure that outcome? I think it's a great question, Jacob, and, and I think um, the answer is piece by piece. So as we go in, what you know, we'll we'll use uh, pretty fundamental change management uh, theory to start with those that need to own this work the most, um, namely the people on this call, and really make sure that you are trained to speak to it that the details are worked out, that you have talking points on hand, and we'll be working on, on all of that, developing all of that content as the kind of first step. Um, and moving towards then who are the advocates within the organization that can also be brought into the fold to own this, training them, giving them the talking points, making sure they have practice speaking to it. And then from there, the work sort of disseminates out, right? And you bring in more and more um, you reach your arms further in getting this information out there and people feeling comfortable with it. So it's not an overnight process, but it is a process of building, building the tools and resources that you will need in order to really get this information out there. So it starts with the presentation and then it goes into the activation phase in which we start thinking of what are those best tools? Are there onboarding pieces that need to be developed? Are there staff training manuals that need to be developed? Um, there's a number of things that, that we can help uh, guide, touch, um, you know, provide, um, provide thoughts towards based on the strategy and, the, and the, the research that we've done. And so we'll be kind of working in lockstep with other implementation partners to move forward and, and make all of that happen. So this is just the first step. Sounds I great, think, thank you. I think one of, the, um, one of the things to remember is, and we touched on it just briefly, is that up to now, part of the confusion around Plan RBA's identity and articulating the benefits have been that there are lots of voices saying what they think you do and who they think you are. This is about 
making you all comfortable. And as Ryan said, those that are the strongest advocates internally comfortable saying, this is the stake in the sand. This is who we are. This is what we do. Giving you control over your own message and your own decision-making processes um, to, to, to own it. And once that begins to happen, it does exactly what Ryan said. It sort of ripples out to the other stakeholders, but it's about you controlling your message and owning your brand with the passion around it that will begin to make, make that, that difference. Awesome, thank you. So, so Martha, as you know, we, I mean, I think some of what Charlie was leading to was you know, possibly projects. Obviously, you know, Jacob sort of touched on, you know, some other elements that we've talked about, but I mean, I think it's clear that we need to, when we present to the board, remind everybody there is a strategic plan that guides the organization. Everything from fiscal responsibility to hiring and culture and everything related there. There's a community outreach and engagement strategy that Rashonda is responsible for. And now this is our messaging piece to the whole thing. So I want to make sure everybody understands these are sort of interconnected sort of things together that all make sense. And what we need this team to be really focused on is the message. So it's crystal clear. So we don't have any constraints to achieving what Rashonda needs to achieve or to what Martha, what you need to achieve out there, you know, sort of running your organization. So tell me what I might have said that's sort of out of order or maybe inconsistent with what you, the message we want to present in front of the board on the 10th. I don't think anything. Um, I, I would say, I think um, it's exciting to hear the questions raised here because I think it's a, it's a predictor, the canary, so to speak, of what we're gonna hear on the 10th. And I think, Charlie, what we hope from this is just as Tim said, we have an organizational strategic plan. We have our community engagement strategy. And now this, this layers atop that to really, I think, be able to create a foundation to discuss what that next big thing is at the board level, rather than the staff coming with ideas or suggestions or that menu. This is an opportunity to kind of reposition the commissioners as that group of visionary leaders from the region to receive the data perhaps that staff are collecting or receive you know, feedback from the various channels where we're doing some, some things, but, but really to be able to say like, here's what's happening in my community. Is that happening in yours? Um, this is what I'm concerned about. Can we come together to work on this? And I think that that's, um, in talking with the team, that's this opportunity of empowerment for the board that I think really is culminated by the organizational strategic plan, um, the work that we've done over the last couple of years under Tim's leadership to improve our financial stability, to be able to, you know, kind of really contract some of our, our staff activities into the core areas of focus, and then to be able to come back to the board and say, okay, you know, we've done that sort of organizational um, strength training. Now we're ready to be able to come back to you and, and start to think big about the future of the region and what role Plan RVA can, can provide in seeing that future, convening the leaders to talk about that future, um, you know, planning in the, in the area where we have that, that specific expertise and that shaping, you know, kind of ultimately. So, so Tim, I don't know how Kelly, that- Kelly, can, can you sort of help me make sure that when we open for the board, some of what I suggested and Martha just articulated is clear. I don't want the board members to believe that this team is job is to, to recraft the strategic plan. Absolutely. And yeah, I re, re, rethink the organization. This is layered on top of a strategic plan that already exists, a community engagement plan that already exists, but we need um, the messaging and the brand promise to be clearly articulated if we're going to execute our strategic plan. Absolutely. I, I think it goes to that clarity of message that we talked about. And I can add to that. I made some notes, uh, Martha, both based both on what 
what you said, uh, Tim, what you said, and what others have said here to just make sure that we're really clear on that when we introduce it. I think it's also important to talk about next steps very clearly because we are in partnership with Hodges on this. We will be developing a, a clear path for the communications to take. So a communication strategy talking about some of those things that Charlie asked about, what, what happens next? And we may wanna end with a little bit of that. So that's really good preparation for our next session. Charlie, that is sort of for you to hear and sort of see if that makes sense. Cause yeah, you sort of went to, in my opinion, what would be a question that we would lob into our strategic planning process? And I, I don't want that to run down that rabbit hole with some of our board members that haven't been involved in the strategic plan. They haven't been involved in community engagement plan. Uh, and to some degree, this might be the first real presentation that some of our new board members, you know, will have really been able to absorb and, and, and listen to just because of some of the people that have onboarded recently. I don't want to get distracted and, and go backwards. I want to make sure we use the tenth to jump off and go forward a lot faster. Tim, I acknowledge you're entirely correct. I apologize for jumping to third base with the project question. Um, and you're right, we need to be on first base and get everybody in the game plan. And what I'm, if I may pair, uh, repeat what Martha said, we need to give the um, reaffirmation of the charter, um, add more substance to the, the charter, in bringing folks to look at the overall big picture of collaboration and um, to define any unclear relationships and to kind of agree on, on a strategy going, a collective strategy going forward and to get to second base, forgive the spring baseball analogy, um, how we can work together once we define the uh, common objectives. Hopefully I've, I've summarized uh, what Moth was, was saying. And then Kelly, I really like what you said because because brand work is never done. We've used the word drumbeat and obviously we have to be the champions to take this forward even after the consulting responsibility you guys have possibly has ended. So I do like sort of finishing that presentation with next steps such that you know people know they're going to get probably some of the implementation things they're going to have more of an understanding of than the how we got to where we are. So whether that's a follow-up presentation or whether they just see that happening, um, I think next steps needs to be where we linger for a little while on the 10th. I think so too. It'll answer a lot of questions for people. Good. I was just about to, yeah, I was just about to add something that Mr. Davies said, uh, or at the end of what he said is, is I think also, and this is more comment, is it's imperative that we highlight the, that there is a problem um, at the beginning, I think a little more clearly than um, we did here with the knowledge of all of the stakeholders, because I know that some of the comments we've gotten is there's a perception among some of the, the members that um, we all know what we're supposed to be doing because we were all on the board. Um, and we know here that that's not the case, but there are still members who have this. So I, I would just stress that highlighting that there is actually a problem at the beginning a little bit more strongly for the full commission, um, I think it'd be beneficial. I think that's great. Thanks, Jacob. Well said. Anything else, Charlie? Um, just to be clear, on the 10th, next Thursday, we will, uh, or, or you will present the presentation. We're clearing and authorizing this presentation today, am I correct? approving it? Uh, I don't think we need to formally vote on it, but okay. shaping it to the point where you're com you're comfortable with this being on the agenda in that cheerleader role that I talked about at the beginning. I, I am, yes. And I will note, um, as, as everyone is aware, uh, we have worked to clear the agenda, if you will, to have this be the focus. So we did not schedule another program um, for March. Um, this is essentially the, the meat of the business and the program. Um, so when you get your packets, you'll notice it's a, it's a much um, smaller page count <laughs> uh, than, than normal. But I, I also do want to just, I guess, Tim, this is most, mostly a question for you. 
we typically have about 20 minutes of um, bandwidth of commissioners for speakers. And this is a, this is a meaty presentation. So um, any thoughts that the committee might have about how to tee this up and, and kind of guide the commissioners and what they should be listening for. Um, the background, I think in particular for the full commission is important, but I, I know that we struggle sometimes with longer presentations. Well, and so that's where I think, um, I think we're the choir, so we know most of obviously the first half of the presentation. Um, I also believe there's an awful lot of people on the full commission who are spun up on this pretty well also. So, so Kelly, if we could have some acknowledgement at the beginning in whatever words that make sense of, we have a strategic plan, you know, we have a community engagement plan, and obviously your team was brought in to really go ahead and create the brand, you know, that is going to lead, you know, our messaging out in the community. Um, I think that's helpful to sort of set the stage and it's done sort of in three parts. Obviously, Frazier, you're going to describe the first part of it, which is the results of the research. And my thinking is we could do that um, in fewer slides because I don't think we have to step through every quadrant each time. I think our guys are smart enough to sort of recognize those four um, elements relatively quickly. If they ask right. questions there, great, we can always go back to the slides. But obviously, as we get into, as Ryan sort of, you know, sort of uh, presenting going forward, uh, and then obviously this inspirational, Ryan, what do you call that inspirational? The manifesto. Manifesto. I really do think that's one of the things that if, it, Martha, to your point, if we have 20 minutes, you know, it should be five, five, five minutes, you know, sort of letting that manifesto sort of lay out there for a while and then generate Q&A for the remaining seven or eight minutes. I really think that's the way we ought to try to do this. Yeah, I, I think the same. I think we can make the research re report pithier and clearer. They always have access to the full report. Right. But that, that way we'll get there faster. And I really do think many of the newer board members are going to probably nod, not in being bored, but not in agreement with the research. Because <laughs> even if they weren't part of the interview panel, they're going to empathize with that research. Um, so yeah, we may get some Q and A, but we can always refer back to it, like you said. So yeah, it's always good to have a um, the the a presentation like this to the the folks in the ring, so to speak. So it's helpful feedback. Yep. I, I will say too, Tim. I mean, I think your history on this is helpful, but I mean, this this committee structure has been around now for a couple of years, so. To your point, while we have new commissioners, that this is their second board meeting, the first of which was voting on a new office space, um, we've thrown them into the deep end. But um, I do think that there's been a lot more kind of comfort in the committee doing the, the deep work, um, you know, really kind of digging in and then coming with the end product back to the full commission. And that has worked fairly well over the last two or three years um, with with our structure so it's because charlie and jacob agreed to serve on the committee we were just a committee right. of one or two for a long time right yeah i'm a masochist be here. for uh, projects like this well and and then martha in, in hopefully not too uh too short of a reply if, if people really really generate interest and in be you know sort of asking questions I'll just recruit him to join the committee and that'll shut him up. So. <laughs> I love that. Well, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. I know um, a lot of effort has gone into getting to where we are and where we're headed. So um, literally everybody on the screen has been a huge part of, of this progress. And um, I think it's, I don't say this word lightly. I mean, it's a lovely story that has, you know, we have the ability to to share about our organization and our region. And I think it invokes just so much of the, the goals that we all have for our community. So I just, I really think it, it speaks well to that. Um, I have a couple of just like kind of technical feedback things that I can pass on to you guys offline. Um, just kind of 
hearing it today and, and that kind of a thing. But otherwise, I, I would say if there are other feedback items like that, if you could pass them to me or Rashonda or Sid as soon as possible. Perfect. Give that um, to the team. But um, really appreciate everyone's time today and the flexibility to let this happen before the full commission hears the report. Thank you, Martha. And just um, a little note, we will be dropping off. We have this presentation printed in a very beautiful bound book that you will all get. We will also be dropping off copies for the next presentation. However, we'll ask that you not distribute those until after the presentation. Um, we don't want people sort of reading through it ahead of time and then um, not absorbing as much while we are speaking to it or, or having questions kind of that they go in um, that we might address with voiceover. So you will get those uh, in between in between these two these two presentations, but they're already printed and bound and, and beautiful. Great, very helpful. And I should just mention logistically, um, we are hosting our board, our, our commission meeting on March 10th in person. However, I, I expect that we will continue to have a, a smaller number, but a member, a, a group of members that are participating virtually. So if we need to do any kind of a coordination for that to fit kind of the media format, I know that that's hybrid is a little bit of a challenge with this particular content, but um, we can work with you also in between now and the 10th on that. That's great. Great. I'll be there in person. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you. Kelly, Rachel, Ryan, Frazier, thank you very much. It's great work. You bet. Thank you for your time today and for inviting us to help you on this project. It's really been inspiring to learn about the work that you all do. And Indeed. I think greater days are ahead. I really like how everything was how it, turned, how it turned out. The story part is actually pretty interesting. So I'm kind of curious to see how this is going to look um, just on a marketing aspect of things. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Great presentation. And then I just have one question for Kelly. Is that a port key back there? That's that screen is have? 1984 Macintosh. It, yeah, it's the original uh, old Macintosh, the very first one they introduced. Doesn't even have a hard drive. It's a muggle 128, box. 128K. <laughs> I think it was 128K, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so you're much using less it as than a you could get on a flash drive, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, thank um, you, everybody. Great work. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, a quick question, got a quick question from Martha um, and, and, and maybe Tim. Will the um, agenda and everything come out early enough uh, on the weekend for me to go through and, and review and then have a few questions if I have any few questions to uh, disseminate? Yes, um, just because I have my inbox open, the packet link is in your inbox. So it's a blip. If you receive um, hard copies, the packet were, packets were sent yesterday, so they'll arrive in U.S. Post. If you receive the digital copy, it's in your inbox. Um, none of the content from today was included in that description, again, speaking to what we heard before, but um, the agenda's there. Okay, thank you. Sure. I'm still recovering from uh, getting off the airplane on Sunday night, three weeks gone. <laughs> It was yeah, rough. This will be at the top because it just it's a it's the first no no sympathy. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> You're a tough <laughs> taskmaster, Tim, but I enjoy working with you. Me too. I enjoy working with you guys too as well. So it's what committees should be all about is relationships, you know, shared interests. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing about your vacation when we get a chance. Uh, there's no short story with me. Be careful what you wish for. Thanks. See y'all next Bye, guys. Thursday at all, uh, nine o'clock. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank See you. you. Bye, Rashonda. Bye, Sid. Thanks. Bye, Martha.